Dear colleagues, this is a copy of a talk I gave at the 19th Congress of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venerology in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. I'm going to talk about new treatment options in the treatment of onychomycosis. I could have talked about some of the new drugs that are on the horizon, but I'm going to concentrate on how we can improve using the current, dr current drugs on the market. I'll be asking a series of questions and then I will try to answer them. And my first question is, what is the problem? And the problem is that we cannot cure everybody. I want to draw your attention to a study we did a few years ago. In this study we treated almost 500 patients with either terpenophene or hydroconazole and we look at the uh, results uh, at 18 months. Here we see the results 18 months after initiating treatment. As you can see the mycological cure rate at 18 months are only 80% for the terpenophene treated patients but the comparable figures for hydroconazole are only a little less than 40%. Our second problem is if we manage to cure the patient, he is at risk to get reinfected or relapse. In this study, we followed patients treated for onychomycosis for up to five years. As you can see on this slide, although the results are acceptable at 18 months, 80% for terpenophene and 40% for hydroconazole, the results at 5 years are poor. Only half of the terpenophene treated patients remain cured and only 13% of the hydroconazole treated patients are cured at this time point. If we take a look at the mycological and clinical relapse rate, it is obvious that most of the relapses occur within the first three years after initiating treatment. A positive thing that we noticed is that patients that uh, failed the original treatment could be successfully treated giving an individualized treatment regimen. And here we see that almost 90% uh, of the retreated patients reached mycological cure. So the take-home message from this important long-term study is that the long-term efficacy is only 13 to 50 percent. Also that the patient mainly relapsed from month 18 to 36. The important thing is however that patients who fail standard treatment can be successfully treated giving an extended treatment regimen. So the obvious question is, what can be done? And there the first question that pops up to mind is, can we increase the efficacy of the treatment? We can see on this slide, where we compare the treatment of uh, amarolfin plus terpenophene with terpenophene only in patients with onychomycosis with matrix involvement. It can be seen that treatment with amarolfin and terpenophene is more efficacious than terpenophene only. So our conclusion is that combination treatment is more effective than monotherapy, at least in the difficult to treat patients. We could also extend the oral treatment. Remember the lesson from the five-year-old study where patients who failed a standard course of oral drug for three months could be treated successfully with extended treatment. Another possibility would be debridement in patients with difficult to treat areas such as uh, dermatophytoma or streaks. My next question is how can we detect the difficult cases in order to decide what treatment to choose? Here I would like to draw your attention to a recent study where we followed almost 200 patients for a year and a half. We looked at various prognostic factors that are suspected to be of value for onychomycosis. We did multivariate analysis and calculated the odds rate ratios. The study showed that the following factor affected the likelihood of cure negatively. Prior infection, matrix involvement, lateral edge involvement, 
thick nail plates, subangual hyperkeratosis, and dermatophytomas. Examples of such factors can be seen on the following slides. In the top left corner, lateral involvement. In the top right corner, matrix involvement. In the bottom left corner, dermatophytoma. And in the right left corner, a thick nail plate. The following factors did not have a prognostic value. The extension of the nail involvement. Existence of spikes the number of toenails infected, and the duration of the infection. Patients with uh, fast nail growth did better, also younger patients did better than older patients, and thus in many cases women did better than men. My next question is, can we identify the patients that are not going to respond adequately to the treatment? In this study, we looked at prognostic factors of mycological cure following treatment of onychomycosis with oral antifungal agents. Almost 500 patients were included. We used multivariate analysis to identify factors with prognostic values. We were able to show that a positive mycological culture at 12 and 24 weeks had prognostic value for cure. In a recent study from 2010, we were able to confirm these results. This means that we, if uh, we re-examine the patient at six months and the patient has a positive culture, the patient is unlikely to reach cure and can accordingly be retreated at that time. We can see an example of this in the following patients, which is a 50-year-old woman treated with oral terpenophene for onychomycosis. We can see at baseline that the nail has almost total involvement and there is nice response already at 4 weeks, even better at 8 weeks, 12 weeks and 16 weeks. At 24 weeks the nail looks really nice but there is a cloud on the horizon. We, there was a positive culture of trichophyte and rubrum at that time. If we had known at that time that this is a negative prognostic sign we could have retreated the patient and avoided the misery that we see at 72 weeks. My next question is, now that we have cured the patient, can we prevent the reinfections? We have tried to address this issue in the following study, where we used prophylactic treatment with amarolfine for three years, but following the patient for a total of four and a half years. We knew from clinical experience and data from the literature that application of uh, amaralfin nail lacquer every two weeks could be sufficient to prevent a reinfection. Studies have also shown that amaralfin uh, maintains antifungal concentrations for at least 14 days after the application. So in, six, in this study, we included 52 patients already treated with terpenophene and clear of the infections. The patients were given prophylactic treatment with amaralfin nail lacquer once every two weeks for three years. This was an open label study compared with no prophylactic treatment. Here we see a patient treated with terpenophene at baseline for three months. The amaralfin prophylactic treatment is started at 18 months and continued for three years. And we can see at the end of uh, observation at 54 months, the patient has uh, perfect nails. Here is another patient treated with uh, terpenophene at baseline and receiving no prophylactic treatment with amarolfine. And we can see that there is a clinical and mycological relapse at uh, 42 months. And here, similarly, another patient without prophylaxis, and we can see that there are signs of a clinical relapse already at probably at 24 months and definitely at 30 months. Similarly, in this patient who did not receive prophylaxis, we can see 
a uh, clinical and mycological uh, relapse at uh, 42 months. The final patient did receive prophylaxis and responds nicely to the treatment and remains uh, clinically and mycologically cured at the end of the study at 54 months. And when we look at the numbers, after 12 months, we could see 8.3% recurrence in the Amarolfin group, but almost 32% in the untreated group. At the end of the study, 71% of the Amarolfin group remained cured, but the corresponding figure for the untreated group was 50%. So from this small study, it seems that uh, Amarolfin lacquer has a prophylactic value. I would also like to point out that in this study we did not use other modes of prophylactic treatment such as uh, topical creams or treatment of tinea pitis that would uh, of course be done in real life and that should uh, enhance the prophylactic value of uh, amorolfin treatment. But should we use prophylactic treatment on everyone? Or can we identify the patients that are likely to develop onychomycosis? In this study, we selected almost 4,000 patients randomly from the national register and offered patients with possible signs and symptoms of onychomycosis a clinical examination with mycological sampling. We were able to demonstrate several risk factors for onychomycosis, such as uh, cancer, psoriasis, tinea pitis, relatives with onychomycosis, regular swimming activity, and uh, older patients. A recent large study has uh, confirmed these results and uh, also shown that home temperature, time-wearing shoes can be an important factor. My final question is, are there patients who do not respond to our drug? I want to answer that question by showing, this, showing you this 50-year-old lady. She had clinical toenail onychomycosis and this was confirmed with uh, mycological culture. I initiated treatment with oral terpenophene, but after two months on terpenophene, the patient called me and told me, Doctor, my fingernails are getting infected. I took her back to the office took a sample from the fingernail and it grew trichophyton rubrum. I initiated treatment with uh, itraconazole and this was uh, how the patient's fingernail looked a few months later. So what we have here is a partial or total resistance to turbinum. So now to the conclusions. How can we increase the efficacy of current onychomycosis treatment? First, it is important to identify patients at baseline who are likely to fail treatment, and there we can use the prognostic factors. We should consider combination treatment or even extend the treatment at five to six months if the patient has several poor prognostic factors. We should re-examine the patient at five to six months, and we should re-treat the patient with positive culture or insufficient clinical response is seen. We can also at this time point consider a combination of oral and topical treatment. Think about resistance if the response is abnormal. Try another drug. When we have cured the patient, consider prophylactic treatment after cure in high-risk patients or patients with a history of previous relapse. Use the risk factors I to told you about earlier. Dear colleagues, it is my belief and experience that we really can increase the cure rates seen in the literature by combining the methods I have uh, discussed during this talk. Thank you very much for your attention.